Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of the series Learning the Sicilian Dragon. In the previous episode, we saw the main line in Sicilian Dragon and also a very famous trap. So, since we are into the second uh, video, it's important that I show you some games which are a uh, really kind of a uh, dragon uh, with the kind of dragon i mean that which have that perfect taste of dragon yeah so the game today which i'm discussing is this uh, game i took from the database and this game was played between two german players and this game will give you the exact taste and also uh, almost all the key ideas of the sicilian dragon uh, apart from the board i have also made a uh, things to remember section or the notes section which uh, where you can take a screenshot of that and revise it later so now moving into the match e4 c5 so this is the standard and uh, uh, in the main line after f3 we see knight to c6 but the game we are discussing today has after f3 it has castle and here queen to d2 the idea is similar that he wants to eliminate a uh, black's dark squared bishop then he plays knight to c6 bishop to c4 bishop to d7 uh, castle long and here comes the first key idea in the Sicilian dragon both the players castle in the opposite flanks though this is not uh, like you will not see every game in this line but yeah most of the games are played in this particular system only and this is the most exciting system or the exciting variation of a dragon Rook to c8, bishop to b3. Now, uh, okay, I, let me show you the move. Knight to e5. So the key, uh, the second key idea here is that the knight sitting on c6, it wants to come to e5, and then it wants to sit on c4. Now the reason is that from c4 it looks at some a really nice squares uh, in the white camp yeah these are the squares in the blue these are the squares where this knight wants to look at but our bishop sitting on sitting on b3 it stops uh, black's knight from coming to c4 which happened in the game so after knight to e5 h4 and this is the third key idea whenever the kings are castled on the opposite flanks or the opposite sides it's a game of pawn races yeah it's a game of pawn races and in this pawn race mostly these two pawns on the extreme corners sacrifice their lives to get a wonderful to get some wonderful files where his rook queen or maybe some diagonals where, where from his bishops can take part in the attack now here comes h5 and this is the according to modern lines this is uh, a very good defense against h4 and this h5 is good not only in this line but in many other lines as well and uh, now comes the next key idea uh, that is to uh, exchange the g7 bishop so here black played knight to c4 as it was his idea so our, our bishop did its job bishop c4 rook c4 and then bishop into g7 king into g7 and this like Whenever white goes bishop h6 uh, 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 except the main line where the queen comes to a5 and then to h5 except uh, this main line 
in most of the games you will see that white's uh, bishop actually captures here and then the king captures um, mostly uh, black's uh, dark squared bishop doesn't capture here the reason is uh, that if uh, black's bishop captures here then the queen can have a direct entry over here and after say after g4 and after rook d g1 uh, black might be in trouble okay so anyways in the game took took and then g4 so here okay after h into g4 here comes h5 now here uh, i would like to ask you to pause the video and think for a while that means like how to react to this move do you want to take it or do you want to leave it if you want to take it then you want to take it with the knight or with the pawn ready okay in the game knight takes h5 happened but let's have a look what happens after pawn takes h5 okay so if, if there is pawn takes h5 then simply the queen will jump to g5 no matter wherever the king goes here rook into our rook will capture the h pawn then then knight takes rook queen takes knight no matter wherever the king goes king to g5 back and uh sorry not this this uh, is a checkmate going back Now let's have a look what happened in the game. In the game, knight took uh, black, took the pawn with the knight, and here comes the third key idea. And this I uh, told you in the previous introductory video as well. I told you that most in most of your games, the knight will jump to h5, stopping your rook from attacking. But if his pieces are not coordinated well are they are if they are not coordinated well then you can take the knight or you can give an exchange sacrifice and already knight to h5 was a blunder because after rook h5 g h5 he has simply a clean mate in four can you find that congratulations if you found the move queen to g5 king to uh, h8 yeah black will play that now what's the continuation congrats if you find queen to h5 king to g7 and this back and finally this is a checkmate okay so before beginning i would like to ask you that it's better if you take the screenshot right away okay so the first point says that white and black both sides castle in the opposite flanks and it results in an in a pawn race second point says white wants to exchange the dragon bishop yeah the bishop which is on g7 and the black wants to stop it well uh, what do you know the beauty of that game it is that it has all the points mentioned here Okay, so the next is one of the black's key ideas is to play knight to e5 and knight to c4. And white's light squared bishop does the task of stopping it from coming to c4. White and black are both ready to sacrifice their two extreme flank bonds which are a and b in case of black, g and h in case of white for a crushing attack. If black's knight sits on h5 limiting a rook on h1 from attacking and his pieces are not well coordinated, you should not hesitate to sacrifice your exchange now here the pro tip for you be fearless yeah you care about building constant threats and nothing else so that's it for today guys i hope you like the game which i discussed today and i hope that you are liking the series as well share this with all of your or friends and don't forget that we are organizing a tournament and uh, see you there so that